Welcome back to The Breakfast. Earlier, we, of course, uh, showed you a few pictures of men who were paraded by the police a few days ago. Yeah, they're on your screen. Uh, some of the previously unknown gunmen, also known as unknown men, who have uh, been torching police stations in Imo State. As soon as that happened, the family of the man on the white shirt on the right uh, side of your screen complained that he was unjustly arrested. They say he's a staff of a construction company in River State who only came to Imo State to prepare for his father-in-law's burial, uh, which uh, was meant to take place the next day. This morning, we're speaking with the founder of Behind Bars Human Rights Initiative, Harrison Guamishu. Good morning, Harrison. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. All right. Earlier, you know, we had uh, spoken about this, you know, and I, you know, started by saying that this is, you know, once again, um, you know, another example of uh, police parading suspects who have not been found guilty of anything, but is a part of the Nigerian uh, police's uh, uh, um, operations, you know, where they arrest people and then immediately tag them with certain crimes and parade them. Um, so let's start there. Um, how much of a problem is that, you know, with Nigeria, with our country, including the EFCC, parading persons who have not been found guilty of any crimes yet? Okay, um, it's a systematic problem. Um, you know, all these um, security agencies, EFCC, they are fond of doing that too. Now, um, let me, in terms of this one that happened in Oweri, uh, in Oji, most states, these guys were raided after um, the unknown government has attacked the Oji police station um, before these guys were raided and arrested. Some of them were arrested even before um, the attack happened um, in Oji. All right. So this has continued, not just this Oji's own, but other ones that, uh, that, that, that keep happening. Now, we discover that when these people attack the station, you don't see police anywhere. You can see the unknown government parading in the street with guns, unchallenged. Nobody challenged them. But immediately they, 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 uh, they attack and, and leave. You see the security men coming and, you know, um, raiding people and arresting people, so innocent people, and detaining them, and now parading them as uh, the hoodlums who attack the stations. So this is a big problem for us in Nigeria and also currently in Imo State, too. Uh, because even when you saw the video, there's a video clip video that was made where the people, the masses, were hailing the unknown gunmen. Yes, they were hailing them and even greeting them. They were close up to them. But then the police came, everybody started running because they know that police will still arrest them. Innocent people too. So it's a, there's a big problem. You know, there's a disconnect between the masses and the police. And at this point, the, the police should not, not only the police, the military are also involved. So it's, it's the security agencies too. So they need our trust. We have to have confidence in them to also work with them. Because if you can't see us hailing, the masses hailing unknown government, civilians armed with AK-47 in the street, we are hailing them. We are, they are closer to them. And the police we are supposed to be closer to, we are not running away from them. So it's a big problem between the masses and also the, uh, okay. the security agencies. In so, this country. Harrison, um, some reports I read yeah. showed that there are about 6,000 Nigerian kids, children between be, below the age of 18, who are languishing in Nigerian prisons. And that there are yeah. about that 70% of people in Nigerian prisons are there without trial, lots of them innocent. So, in yeah. your work as yeah. founder of Behind Bars Human Rights Initiative, what are some of the statistics you see on a daily basis of people who are, you know, maybe innocent? but are in prison without any help and justice? Uh, well, um, because of uh, my, the job I've been doing for the past seven years, I've been able to visit several prisons and also police custody too. I've seen people um, who are there, uh, maybe we, we do some uh, counseling and we discover that most of them were there, were picked up from the street and locked up in the prison custody. And uh, because these stories, you can't hear them out because they are confined. You can't go to the prison to carry out, um, like, you know, interview them and the rest of them, too. So there are many of them who are in prison. I can tell you this, and I can stand anywhere and say that there are many of them who are in prison today who are awaiting trial, not even condemned or uh, sentenced to, uh, you know, uh, convicted for any crime. But they are there as awaiting trial three years, four years, five years, six years, seven years. They are there languishing 
as a losing trial. So most of them don't even know why they are there. They only they only know that they were picked up from the street, to, uh, taken to a magistrate court, and remanded in prison. Now, this what happened is the police knows that they, the magistrate, magistrate court does not have um, jurisdiction to try criminal matters. So okay. what they do is to pick up the suspect, take them to a uh, magistrate court that don't have jurisdiction to try criminal matters. They now become a waiting trial in the prison. But what's so the aim? Seventy percent of people in the Harrison. prison are waiting trial. Harrison, so what's the aim of the police doing that? They know that this particular court has no jurisdiction to hear such cases. So what's the yes. aim for of, of doing that? That, that? that judicial system we are we are we are currently in um, because the the SCJ law has already condemned this, but they keep doing this every time. Each time suspects are taken to magistrate court. Like people who are charged for murder or uh, armed robbery, they cannot be taken to a high court. They will now take them to magistrate court. And they know that magistrate court don't have jurisdiction to try the case. So what they do, magistrate court will tell you, ah, we don't have jurisdiction to try your matter. You have to be in a remand pending when a DPP advice will, um, will come out from the, uh, from the Department of Public Prosecution, that Ministry of Justice. And your, if, your paper, if your case file leaves magistrate court to DPP, if nobody follow it up, no lawyer follow it up for you, it may last there five years, three years, two years, and you'll be, la you'll be languishing you know, uh, in, yeah. in the prison. Uh, so, what Aneta is trying to find out is, what exactly is the aim? What, what's the goal, knowing that um, the, the magistrate court cannot try these cases, but yet you keep a person in, in, in jail for five years, ten years? What, what's the aim? Does the police benefit from having these persons just locked up? This thing happens where the family cannot come up with bail conditions given to them at the police station. So to suffer the suspect um, suspect family, this is they, they always go on that angle by taking them to um, to a magistrate court. So for instance, now somebody is being arrested and they ask him to pay hundred thousand naira and he cannot afford it. What happens is they charge you to court. They, they bring up the charges and take it to the police. If um, this criminal cases comes up, they are supposed to take the case file and copy it to the Ministry of Justice, DPP, who now issue advice whether these people are to be charged to the court or released. But these things um, don't happen. So you're saying, so you're today. saying basically, majority of uh, uh, the, the most reason why the police do this is because maybe family members cannot afford to raise the money for bail. So just basically share wickedness. Yes. Like you're saying. And it's not even the yes, police who should true. be, you know, um, you yeah. know, uh, talking about bail. Is it the police that determines how much bail is? Hmm. I, 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 I'm, I don't think so. But let's... That, let's... That, 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 in the country we are. Well, I want to... I want to... Get relief from the, uh, from the police cell. It's a, it's a level of wickedness that I can't even imagine. Um, you know, knowing that your police yeah. officer walking around the streets with your rifle, um, forgetting that you have 10, 12, 15, 11 people that you've kept behind bars and they've been there for eight years. Possibly And innocent. you're going home every day to meet your family. It's a level of weekend that I cannot mm. phantom. Um, but I, I want to talk about how dangerous uh, things like this are. Um, for example, the uh, Imo State issue now. Um, if this is, you know, like the way it has been described, random people have been picked up. They have been tagged unknown gunmen. Um, you know, of course, uh, while the real criminals and the real gunmen are still walking free. How dangerous is this for, you know, the Nigerian society and for Nigeria itself? Okay, for now, um, there is, like I said, there is a disconnect because, one, the masses, the citizens will not, will not collaborate to the security agencies with this happening now. So where the masses, where you have a disconnect between the masses and the police is a very big problem for us. And now you keeping an innocent man in the prison for a crime he, he never committed is another problem too. Because while he's there too, he's coming back to revenge to carry out the event on the people who took him to prison too, who took him to cell. Now, 
Um, since we lost, we lost uh, Harrison there, we'll try to see if we can reconnect with him because I want us to go down to this specific case of Mr. Ibe and these other people. I mentioned some, some people said one of them, is, you know, they recognize him to be Daddy Fresh, Ibaba. What options do they have? We might need to bring a lawyer into the situation. We need to know what options does the family have? Can they begin to, you know, prosecute? Or is there anything they can do? Do they need to get a human rights lawyer to defend and speak up for, for their family members? We need to know what options they have. Because imagine if it was me, just picked up from the streets. What, what options does my family have? We need to find this out. Um, hopefully, we get Mr. Harrison back on the line yeah. or continue this conversation some other time uh, well, regarding um, this. You know, like you said, you know, it, it, it's important because, you know, this might be, you know, the start of many other cases that, you know, you know could also be solved. Um, um, earlier, I said, you know, that this exposes the level of rot that is in the system, you know, and it's a level of wickedness, you know, also that would make you just pick a random person and tag them, you know, and, you know, a gunman, take their pictures, and you're willing to put them in jail for, you know, for years. Juston is currently on strike, so a lot of courts aren't even um, uh, functioning. So you're willing, you know, to put another Nigerian, a fellow Nigerian like you, that you know is innocent, you know hasn't committed any crime. Put a pistol crime. in their hands. Put, it, yeah, put you know, drugs and, and in their hands. And throw them in jail and just go, by, go about your regular life. So it's but a level okay. of wickedness that I cannot even I read imagine. a story the on Twitter. The devil will be shocked. I read a story on Twitter. This guy said he was driving. His father was in the car. He was driving. And police stopped them at a checkpoint. They asked for his laptop. They gave him his laptop. They were with the laptop for a while. And afterwards, they said, oh, look, you have the broader applications that, you know, internet fosters use. I said, oh, you have these applications. The guy went to his phone, went to downloads, went to his laptop, went to download, and said, look, this application was downloaded so, so, so seconds ago. They now turned to the father and said, oh, this your son is a very smart boy. They now laughed and let them go. They downloaded the, those applications on his laptop as they held it. Maybe they put their phone on, I don't know, mobile hotspots and connected the Wi-Fi, but they just found a way and they downloaded those applications on the laptop as they held it. So we need to really get to the roots of this corruption, how the police actually set you up. They're not after the actual criminals, but they're after innocent people who they can set up and, and imprison. Mr. Harrison, good to have you back. Harrison, if you can hear me, please yeah. unmute your mic. Oh, we can hear you now. Okay, I can hear you. Okay, so I wanted to ask you um, about these particular cases, this Mr. Ibe, and the rest of them, what options does the family have to make sure that they get justice for their sons and get them out of police custody? Okay, at, at this at this point, uh, because I'm strike, judicial uh, staff workers are on strike, so meaning that the court should have been an option for them to file a fundamental human right for them. But now uh, the court are on strike. So, but what what we did yesterday was to file a complaint to the um, inspector of police. Complete response unit Abuja. The police CRU has been response. Uh, they have been uh, working with us for the, for the past five years now. And when cases like this happen, they are the one who um, investigates uh, thoroughly to make sure that innocent persons don't uh, end up in jail. So the CRU are the ones handling the matter now. Because at this point now, nobody can take food for them. Um, no lawyer can visit them. No family member can even see them. They have been detained and locked up without food. And without family members visiting them uh, at the court. So, so no one can write any petition, Mr. Harrison. So you're saying Nobody. no one can write any petition for them to be released? Uh, the, a petition has been raised yesterday. We wrote to the uh, CRO, the Abuja office, the complaint response unit Abuja, headed by APT uh, Shaku, who is already handling this matter now. So we, we expect by today for us to get an update from them, for this guy to be exonerated. From that picture, the three of them there, one is uh, one uh, what Alumaco, he was having Alumaco shoes to fix a window when he was picked up. The other one with a dread is a barber, is a barber in Oji. Then uh, the, the other one with wife works with the construction company who came for a bearer for the Fadarello's bearer uh, in, in a way when he was picked up. So for these three, I know of these three, the white one, the one on dread with the black uh, shot, then the, the smaller one by the left side. Who uh, uh, tied to hand? That one is, a, is a, um, works uh, with one Alumaco uh, uh, company in Oji there in Owe. He was so, going to so, fix so. a window when he was arrested. Going to so fix the a three, window. I can confirm that they were not part of the unknown government. They were not part so, of so, the unknown so, so government. Um, yes, um, I can verify that and I can 
I can stand anywhere and say that we're not part of the unknown government. They were raided, arrested, and detained and paraded as unknown government. It's such a shame. Oh um, um, and, and big shame um, to the Nigerian police force. Um, and, you know, like you said, you know, it's one of the reasons why Nigerians have, you know, very minimal or even zero trust for Nigerian police officers. Zero, and, zero you know, respect. they don't understand. Zero respect, zero trust, you know, and they, they don't understand the reason why a lot of people see them and, and turn, turn their faces away. I know people who away. say they see police officers and they deliberately look at them, will give, give them a scornful it's look. Disgusting, really. Um, yeah. Harrison... So, so um, if you get a response, how can it play out? Is the response going to be ordering their release? Yeah, um, that, that I don't know for now, but they've given us a tracking number to follow up on the case. And um, today, we are going to be calling them again today. Um, um, like, what, we're going to do a, a, an, an online protest too for these people detained too. Okay. What we want is police to investigate these people arrested. They should interview them one, you know. For them to talk about their involvement, they already said that they were not involved in this whole stuff, in this whole um, uh, attack on the police station. They were raided and arrested. So we don't know why they have that to parade them as their own government. That is another issue now. But for now, we are focusing on getting them out from that place they are currently. The All police right. the state CID where they are being detained. Har Harrison Guamishu, um, founder of Behind Bars Human Rights Foundation. We thank you very much for speaking up about this issue. Yeah, thank you. And we hope, you know, we hope that these guys um, are set free um, um, and they can return, you know, back to their families. Uh, you know, uh, once again, I would always say that this is only a fragment, and I mean fragment, a tiny, tiny, tiny molecule. Of um, all the people of, who... You know, exactly. The number of people who... Look at, uh, think of those who are in jail, who have been jailed for, for 10, 8, 12, 15 years. Think of those who have been killed and been tagged arm robbers that will never get justice, you know, and nobody will be, ever be able to investigate. Think of those numbers of, of people, of Nigerians who have lost their lives and were simply just tagged armed robbers. Those who made it in the police, into the police cell and never made it, uh, made it out um, um, alive. Those, who, of course, who are waiting trial or within trial, you know, and, and languishing in some uh, prison um, um, without any hope of justice. Oh it is, this is just a fragment, a very, very tiny fragment of the numbers of, of, of Nigerians who have had to deal with this. And it's a shame. It's on a Nigerian shame. It's a big shame. Um, I, I always, you know, I'm one of those Nigerians, to be honest, I'm one of those Nigerians who drives past the police and I cannot hide my disgust. Um, because I know that a lot of them, yes, they are good cops, Yes, you know, you have a handful of them that are good cops, but there are certain professions that cannot have, you know, bad, you know, um, cops. There are certain uh, professions that can't have bad, you know, persons in them. You can't have bad pilots, you know, and say, oh, you know, we, this airline, you know, we, we, we have good pilots, but some of them are bad, you know, but, you know, we have good ones. Uh, you know, you can have bad doctors. You can't have bad policemen. You can't have yes. people <laughs> in that space. Um, it's disgusting. See, I am reminded of a track we played a few days ago on Plus TV Africa, the police paraded some people say, saying they were criminals. And one of them in the interview said, you know, the journalist asked, why are you here? He said, they say I kidnap person. Nine, they carry me, come here. I was like, wow, they wow. said, they said. Shame. Shame. We need to go. Thanks a lot for spending your Thursday morning with us. It's been a very interesting um, run so far. Um, we hope, of course, uh, that you have a very, very beautiful and fruitful day ahead. If you missed out on any of these conversations, um, at Reach out Plus to us TV on our Africa. social media platforms yes. uh, at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and same with our YouTube channel. And do hug a Manchester United fan today. They all need hugs. They need free food. <laughs> we need hugs and free food. We need all the love that we can get for the next 48 hours. Oh my. Until Chelsea loses on the 29th, then we'll feel better. Oh, my God. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe to our new YouTube channel. It's at Plus TV Africa lifestyle for all your lifestyle and entertainment needs at plus tv africa my name is annetta felix thanks for watching